Hello, my name is Jeff Hajek. I am the owner and founder of Laction Continuous Improvement. Thanks for watching this presentation today. This is part of my Continuous Improvement Development Tips. And today I will be talking about one of the most common questions that I get asked by people who visit my website. And that question is, how do I start using Continuous Improvement in my company? And that's a really good question to ask. The problem is that about 75% of all companies that take on this lean challenge fall short of what they want to accomplish. Now, that doesn't mean that they are completely abysmal failures. What it means is that they set an expectation and they don't meet that expectation. Now, that might mean they want to get a 15% gain um, across the board in pro uh, profit and they only get a 3 or 4% gain. So they call that coming uh, falling short. And this has been consistent over the last decade or so since they've been doing the research. So about three out of four companies aren't going to get everything they want out of it. And I attribute this back to the fact that there are two basic approaches that people take when they try a continuous improvement effort. And approach one is that people apply tools to specific problems. So they might go and apply 5S in one area. They might attack a problem process with standard work. They'll use Kanban to remove a um, problems that they're having with supply um, with their materials. And they might throw a few pokey oaks in place, like this car here, where it prevents scratches. They put a little device in that keeps them from making mistakes. Now, this approach will give you very localized gains. And some of the gains can be significant, but again, it's very localized. And it doesn't create a whole lot of growth in the application of the tools. It really has a very isolated piecemeal um, approach. And each of the tools is limited in its effectiveness because there's no um, nothing to support it. And that's really the second approach that people often take. And this is the one that I do recommend. And approach number two is to apply the tools within a full management system. Now, by management system, I'm talking about having all of your leadership team on board and using a variety of lean management tools to make sure that each of the frontline tools that we just talked about has a, um, a very fertile ground within which to grow. Now, why don't people automatically do this approach? Well, first of all, it's much harder to do, it's more time consuming, and there's a very likely chance that people are going to abandon it along the way because it is so hard and so time consuming. So this contributes to that 75% failure rate or, or coming up short rate. So I've already told you which of these two approaches I prefer, the second one. But that doesn't mean I'm saying don't try the first one. What I'm trying to say is if you do attempt the first one, just go in with a clear expectation of what you're going to accomplish. You'll get a lot of localized gains. But if you want to go through the second approach, here's what I recommend. Go to my website, and on it, if you click on the reference tools and go down to Lean Dictionary, pretty much any one of our um, entries will have an icon on the right-hand side, and it's to get our free Continuous Improvement Development Guide. And if you click that, you can sign up to receive um, the guide in the mailing. And this is what the guide looks like. Um, it comes in uh, about a 90, 97 page document here. And what you find is that we break down into, we break the transition down into a series of phases. Phase one is just learning about the, um, what lean is, what continuous improvement is, and really an exploration phase. So at this point, you're just dabbling. You're trying to find out what is this thing that people are talking about? What is it I heard about? And you really don't have any specific things in mind. But when you get to phase two over here, this gets to be where you're starting to get some, um, you, you've already made a decision that you want to move forward. So um, the way this is broken down, we have all the phases listed. We start down with the phase names. We have a series of principles with each um, item. And as you go down, you'll see some major activities here. Now, a lot of people like to jump in and start teaching the tools and learning about exactly what they should be doing. How do we apply these tools? And I don't recommend that. What I recommend doing is you start out with the management team and you get them to start committing resources because that's a big tell about whether or not they are going to actually be committing long term to changing the way they do business. So if they won't put anything out for the budget, if they don't assign people to this program to be the point people on continuous improvement, it really means that they're probably dabbling and they're going to fall into that three quarter of that failure, that fail rate. So. I do recommend you start putting some budget in there. You also want to start putting together the resources to be effective at um, implementing lean. And by that, I mean a, a work area where you have 
different types of tools and items available for them. Now I have a whole set of checklists for each of these phases and these checklists will walk you through all the specific items. But just keep in mind that what I'm just talking about to get started, don't dive into everything at once, get your management team on board, start talking about change management, communicate uh, the changes to your team, and it'll create a much more conducive environment to making these lean changes. So that should wrap things up here. I just want to say thank you for watching. Best wishes on your continuous improvement journey. And again, if you go to my website, you can download the continuous improvement development guide, and that'll help walk you through uh, the different phases and kind of see how we envision you making a start to finish approach to lean. Um, one of the things that I do want to point out is that even though we have this system in place, you don't have to follow everything precisely. We know that each company has some different set of needs and that everything's going to be um, really customized to what you need in your organization. But I do recommend you follow it as closely as possible. And if you do make a change, make sure there's a good reason why. So that said, thanks again for watching. And until next time, I'm Jeff Hajek from, from Valaxian Continuous Improvement. Thanks.